2019 are Cabernet base. So this is the 19 vintage of Cabernet. And so I'll start by tasting this. And what, wait, what's in the first glass there? This is the, the previous vintage, so this is 18. 18 Southern Hills, yeah. okay. Um, it kind of gives us, it's a guideline, right? It's, this is the style that we are aiming for for the next vintage. Okay. So then I'll taste the 2019, the base. Um, I realize now I don't have a spit bucket. Usually we spit <laughs> when we're blending because we're often tasting many wines at a time. Um, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'll evaluate that and think about those components that I have here. Petite Brudeau for that front to back structure, where the petites are off, for the, the flushiness on the sides. Um, and maybe it's missing a little something here, so I'll try to blend in something. But we'll start with the petites are off. So I want it to be just a little bit more rich on, on the, um, in the middle of the palette. So I'll start by measuring out um, a certain amount. We can say we'll try it at 5%. And sorry for the Facebook fans. Um, we were having some internet difficulties. We've had to get off and then get back on a couple times, but we're hoping that the internet holds strong for the rest of the Wine Wednesday. So I apologize if you were kicked out, but we are back. <laughs> And she hasn't even started yet. All she did was pour a little bit of cab into a glass and then some petite Syrah into the beaker to get a little bit. So now I'm adding, this is a 5% petite Syrah add. So this will darken the wine as well. You can see a little bit. And I'll taste this. Labeling is also very important. So you just put like, oh, I've put 5% petite straw in here, and now I'm gonna see if that does the trick. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of the first wine? Like just the Cab Plain? Yeah, it, it's great. It tastes like Cabernet, which is what we're going for, but I wanna bring a little bit more structure, and I also wanna deepen the color a little bit. Um, petite straw is a great way to do that, so at 5%, I'm gonna add a little bit more structure to the So we have two questions. What's your favorite varietal to blend in Cabernet? Just, is it Petit Verdot? Because you were saying it's the beans, or do you not have a favorite because it's hard to pick? Well, and it's different. Each block is different, and each year is different. So it's really hard to choose. Yeah, that, that's a tough question, but a good question still. Uh, and then the next one is, do you measure the amount of Cabernet in the, in the beaker, or how did you do that to start? Yes. Got it, okay. And then we have another question. How much of another varietal can you add before you have to call it a blend rather than a Cabernet? That's a great question. So we can add up to 25% of other varieties. Yeah, so that's, that's a lot more than you can in a lot of other countries. The United States is very lenient. <laughs> but um, we just like good wine here, so we'll do what it takes to to make the best wine that we can. Um, and I think that that's kind of what Elizabeth does and she's able to play with all these beautiful varieties to kind of help her out there too, which is fun. Got cheers from Texas. Uh, someone said, could you say the periodic table of wines backwards? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going back to that first blend, the 
Now I'm going to add the cabinet trunk. Um, so I measured out 85 milliliters. I added five of petite syrup because that's what worked before. Um, now our percentages are a little different. But I'm going to add 10 percent cabernet franc because I really like this one. Yeah, cabernet franc or cabernet franc from the Livermore Valley is delicious. If you haven't tried it, highly recommend. Many winemakers here make it. We make one. Um, I know uh, Wood Family makes one. Nottingham makes one. Stephen Kent makes one. There's a ton of wineries that make a solid Cab Franc, and they're delicious. I encourage you guys to try them. How long have you been a winemaker? The official title, I actually don't know. <laughs> but I have been making Awesome. Um, okay, so what did you think of the Cab Franc ad? I liked that. I liked that a lot. So with just the Petite Syrah ad, it was maybe a little bit too one-dimensional. But when we brought in the Cabernet Franc, um, it made it just really luscious and a little bit softer, which was nice. Okay, because are the tannins softer on a Cab Franc than a Petite Syrah? Absolutely, yes. And what about a Cabernet Sauvignon? Okay, so it kind of goes down, but it's nice, supple tannins. Yeah. Someone says Elizabeth is great. She's a great winemaker. I agree. And then a lot of people are saying, go Mustangs. We also agree. <laughs> Maybe is also a Mustang grad. <laughs> we have a lot of those here at Wente, actually, which is kind of fun. Um, not as many Davis as, as Mustangs. I know. So what would you do next? All right. Well, this was really good. I liked it a lot. Okay. But you don't want to stop where you necessarily, you think you've got the right one. I just want a little bit brighter to see if you can make it just a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so we have some other options here. I want to add a little bit, maybe a little bit more um, of that theme structure. Uh -huh. um, so I'll add a little bit of petite row. This one um, will be a much lower percentage, so we'll do this at 2%. Okay. Uh, and how do you know when you have the final blend? Question from Instagram. Well, you can, all, you can always go back to your reference sample, which is 2018 vintage. Okay. Um, if we get close to that, great. We always want to make uh, the best wine, so um, we're going to continue, we're going to keep going through all of these iterations until we get to something that we, you, you just feel it and you know yeah. that it's the right wine. Okay. But then like always going back on like the previous vintage or like maybe a vintage that you guys really loved. Absolutely. So like if the, maybe let's say like 15 was the best vintage ever, like you'd go back to 15 and like maybe taste that during the process. Yeah. So what will the oak and oxygen really do? Like how, how could you describe that process? Yeah. So the oak really imparts, um, imparts flavor but in, in aromas, um, but it also really helps with the mouthfeel. Um, it can add, you know, there are different toast, many, many different toast levels um, that we can choose from. We, we like to use different types of toast levels because it adds complexity. It's not just one dimension. Um, and then the role that oxygen plays in wine aging is so critical. Um, and so when you are storing wine in a barrel, there's a lot of uh, oxygen that, that comes into play with that wine. And so it's really able to, to age and soften. Um, some of the, the really um, high toned fruity flavors will mellow a little bit okay. and they'll turn it into something that's maybe a little bit 
richer and more chocolatey. Oh, cool. Um, someone asked, close your eyes and uh, describe your ideal wine. It would be it's dark and rich. Um, I like them to be a little bit more on the tannic side, um, but still really, uh, really true to the fruit and a lot of fruit coming through, but not super fruity. And then the next question is, what makes a wine vintage though? Like what's the year cutoff? So, and it would be like, if you say it's 2018, all grapes would have to be harvested in 2018, but you could have 5% that were not in 2018. Correct. So like 5% could be 2019, because yeah. you're not bottling it for a couple of years usually, or it could be from 2016 or 15, 17. Yeah, if and you're if about... we bring in a little bit more of an aged quality, we might use something that's a little bit older, that'll, that'll really bring that Okay. And then someone asked, what is the fav your favorite part about what you do? Oh, it's so fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the best part is that everyone that I work with and the, the, just the industry as a, as a whole, people are happy and everybody loves what they do, which it just makes your day so much better. I agree. So what did we think about that last ad? Sorry. I know I'm just like peppering you with questions. I think you got this, right? But I think it's going to be perfect. What was it again? I'm forgetting. We are going to do the base of Cabernet. And then we're going to add 5% Petite Syrah, 10% <laughs> right, that was the, the change. Because it's such a small volume, and you can see it in this, it's really not that much um, that we're putting in there, but it makes a big difference. I will take my step back. I think that's a winner. Wow, that's really good. I, I actually think I can taste the cab front, which is kind of crazy. Only at 10%, you can taste a little bit of it. Because um, cab front to me has like a little bit on the greener side, but not in an unpleasant way. Right. Um, still has like beautiful, rich, dark fruit, but it has like a little bit of green, like grassiness or something to it. Yeah, like those dried herbs. Dr yes, yeah. yeah. And, tea, even. Right, and the, yeah, and just really good. Um, we had a question, we had someone say, Elizabeth, you make our day better, which is adorable. Thanks, Tina. Um, any idea how 2020 grapes are doing? Has the weather in Liverpool been good? I can answer that one from those that will just smile as I answer. <laughs> um, so the grapes are actually doing really awesome. This has been an awesome year for us because we have had very warm days every day. This summer has been probably between 80 and 95, but we've only had, I think, two days over 100. So that's awesome weather because we're in that zone where the fruit ripens pretty quickly, but it still gets cold enough at night to retain acidity and you don't have any heat spells where the vines shut down. So that's awesome for quality. We're really looking forward to this vintage, or at least I am as a farmer, like it, this is gonna be such a great vintage. And I'm excited for the winemakers to see what they do with it because they are the artists here. I give them a palette and they paint something beautiful, like the glass I just had, which is crazy that she just did that in like 20 minutes. Like that's insane, but it's delicious. I wish you guys could all try it. Southern Hills 2019 is coming at ya.
Um, I gotta say, I'm so excited hearing your enthusiasm for the 2020 vintage. Harvest is my favorite time of year. Um, there's just a different buzz in the air, and everyone's out here having fun, and it's gonna be great. I agree 100% for like the first two months. And then if it moves into month three, then there's no smiles. <laughs> when you get into Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this year I think we're gonna have an earlier harvest so that it won't be the Thanksgiving harvest threat like the last couple of years and we'll be good, we'll be good. Um, so I have one question here. Um, when is the right time to blend wine? What, like what time of year, how soon after you pick, all that. So, like we said earlier, co-fermentation is also a form of blending, and we're doing that the day that the grapes come in. Um, and that is critical for the way that we're making wine and extracting color. Um, so I, I also believe that early blending is important. Um, the wines have time to narrate together and age together in, um, in their barrels or in their tanks. Um, so what we typically do is each block and each lot separately, um, aside from the co-fermentation part. And then when everything has gone through malolactic fermentation um, and it's, you know, harvest is complete, we'll go through and taste every single lot and we'll make what we call pre-blends. And those pre-blends will end up being um, some combinations with other blenders, but also if we're making Cabernet, it'll um, encompass, you know, maybe 20 different Cabernet lots together and then we'll add in a little bit of those other blenders and then after they've had time to age on oak for a while when it's ready to start thinking about putting it into the bottle we will um, a few months prior to that we will bring everything together and pull in these other pieces that we have and in really small small amounts add some finishing touches okay so if you were to do like a big blend, let's say like super late, like right before bottle, it might taste kind of choppy or like not. It could. It yeah, could. It so could. better to blend earlier and then just do the final things to just like spruce up the flavors. Yeah, exactly. Um, so are any of the wines that you have in front of you co-fermented or are they all 100%? They are. Um, the Cabernet, the, the base Cabernet is co-fermented. Um, so this one has, gosh, it says on the table, we've got, it's 94% Cabernet and um, about 3% Petit Syrah and 3% Petit Verdot. And those are really the two, um, the two varieties that we like to co-ferment with. Sometimes we'll throw a little Malbec in there, um, but mostly we'll stick with the Petit Syrah and Petit Verdot. Awesome. Um, do you ever blend sweet dessert wine? We do, yes. And it always is ready right at midnight, right? <laughs> yes, making port is um, sort of a joke around we're waiting for the bricks to come down at a certain, to a certain point to add in the spirits, which stops the fermentation. And for some reason, it always happens at 2 a.m. <laughs> so someone's coming here bright and early. <laughs> Who needs to sleep? Um, Paulette asks, how old is the new Azul Verde that's coming out in October tasting? So I'm guessing that's probably a 2018? Yes, should be a 2018, yes. 2018. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, are strong tannins always a sign of good wine? No, uh, definitely. I wouldn't say that uh, that's an indication of good wine at all. You can have, you can absolutely extract way too much. You can have a super tannic wine that's not balanced. Um, and again, going back to our wine making philosophies, it's about elegance and balance. And so we're, um, you know, for different different styles of wine, we're aiming for different levels um, and bigger is not always better yeah I agree um, so when you find the perfect wine like you did like you think this is the blend how many other steps do you have to go through to figure out if like this is gonna be it you know like what do you do next yeah so um, after playing with it on the table I'll go back and make sure we have all the right volumes because if we only have so many gallons will um, carry out those blending procedures in the cellar. And it will happen um, in different tanks. We'll, we'll blend everything in tank and then put it back in a barrel. 
Has it ever happened where you like made the perfect blend and then you looked and you're like, oh wait, I don't have enough of this to make it work? <laughs> Does that happen a lot? Um, trying to avoid that as much as possible. There's a lot of prep work that goes into the blending session to make sure that we are looking at the right numbers. <laughs> yeah. uh, just every once in a while. So for me, I have a question. So you said Petit Verdot is kind of like a structural, you know, pillar of the house kind of a thing. Um, if we were to remove about 25 acres of Petit Verdot, <laughs> do we need to plant more? Question mark, because if you only use 2%, we only make one single varietal Petit Verdot, and that's for our Mary as well brand. Um, how much do you need? I, I think we've got it. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> just making sure, because just, you know, questions that I have in my head that I don't get enough time with Elizabeth, <laughs> clearly, so I ask her on Instagram and Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have plenty of wine here. Um, well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us just about blending or, or like the, the process that the, the audience would like to know? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we, I, I peppered you with quite a lot of questions. I'm like, do I have any other questions? Because I probably do. I think it's the, there's no right or wrong way to go about it. And if you're playing at home, too, and you have different lines and Yeah. Um, I think it's just a lot of fun. You can kind of come up with new flavors and new new things you like. Um, if you don't like it, you can always pull it out. Yeah. Do you ever bring wine home to like just get away from work and say like, you know, I'm going to bring some of these bottles home from like samples and like maybe make a blend at home so that you can. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually really important to not only taste the wines in a work environment, but also bring them home and think about them when you're not as concentrated because you're enjoying them like everybody else is going to be enjoying them. And that's, that's what's important. And so when you're, um, I'll bring them home and have a glass of dinner and that'll really tell me how, um, how these wines might pair with food, how they're enjoyed, um, just casually. Yeah. And it is super young. So it's like, how do you like, I, I it's hard for me to like move past that because when I taste it, it's like very, young fruity and I know that it's not going to be that way forever like I always say that our wines have like this sense about them when they're in the bottle like a bottle of sandstone here <laughs> so I always say that it has like what I call a little more dust like it's almost like a beautiful earthiness that I think speaks to our terroir but you don't really get that in the brand new young bot like the glass you have to wait for that fruit to yeah so how do you move past that um I think you just Okay, and then we have one more question here. Would you blend two red blends or would you do single varietals if you were like having a blending experiment at home? Um, I think it's fun to know the varieties because then you can identify what each one is doing. You can do the same thing with, a, with two different red blends, but you'll, you'll really get a feel for what um, those individual varieties do when you blend those. Awesome. Well, it is 5.30. Thank you again, Elizabeth, for your time and for showing us a little bit about blending. I mean, this is great for me because I often come in when they're already blended and I'll taste a bunch of things or I'll come in before they're blended and I'm like just tasting the single vineyard blocks and trying to figure out what I'm looking at. Um, so it's kind of fun to see the process and like how you go about it. And it seems like a lot of work. Uh, I know we came to a solution pretty quickly, but I think you had that pre-planned and I don't know, something seems fishy here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, really, it, it's like such a fun way to kind of see how you work and I appreciate your time. Well, and, nice to actually see you. Yeah, I know. So we haven't seen each other yeah, from far away. We haven't seen each other in a while because, you know, the, the situation in the world, but I appreciate you coming. I am masked up for those who haven't seen me. I don't know how to flip the camera on Facebook. Oh, this. Here, this is the Facebook one. I am back here wearing a mask. <laughs> and I'll say hi to the Instagram folks. Again, everyone, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, and thank you, Elizabeth.
Yeah. Everyone enjoy your southern hills and drink responsibly. <laughs>